In Manchester, after the IRA bomb of 1996 and before the financial crash of 2008, property development became the new punk rock. A post-rave urban growth coalition made up of old punks, ravers, developers and new Labour mandarins took control of the city, transforming it into Britain's regeneration flagship. This is done in the name of the city that created Joy Division and Factory Records and the Hacienda. But one of the first things it did was wipe out as much as it could of the 1960s city that they drew inspiration from in an orgy of demolition and rebuilding. The Los Angeles-based property developer John Lydon recently claimed that he'd seen what a failure socialism was because he'd lived in a council flat. There was a delayed cultural reaction to the cities rebuilt in the 1960s. Their effect only really registered around 10 years later when punk claimed these towers and walkways as home. Places like Hume Crescent, demolished in the 1990s and mostly replaced with standard suburban housing. At one part of it, former residents built a block retaining the Crescent's walkways and open spaces. I asked Liz Naylor, a fanzine editor in late 70s Hume, what she thought of it. The, the sound I'd, I'd associate with the original Crescent's would be actually kind of a hard ambient sound. The wind certainly used to whistle through and round those huge Crescent's and there certainly wasn't bird song, <laughs> and, as I remember. It's a much more idyllic and bucolic version of it, I think. Post-punk is usually represented in terms of concrete and piss, grim towers and blasted wastelands, the places which survive in fragments outside the ring road. The old entrepreneurs built the mills where workers toiled at 12-hour shifts and died before they were 40. The new entrepreneurs sold the same mills to young urban professionals as luxury housing, with rooms half the size of the old council flats. Decades on from the victories of punk and Thatcherism, Coronation Street nostalgia has a rather different sound. This is Chimney Pot Park, a set of terraces in Salford, slated for demolition under the government's Pathfinder scheme and given to the property developer's Urban Splash to redevelop. Nick Johnson, one of their directors, has given presentations where he dates the beginnings of his company to the Sex Pistols gig at the Free Trade Hall. The late Tony Wilson was a propagandist for what the property billboards in Ancoats call New Emerging Manchester, hailing the new city of young media professionals and loft conversions as a centre of the creative class, a cultural capital. This cultural capital didn't tend to produce interesting culture, aside from Mancunian autohagiographies like Control of 24-Hour Party People, but it did create new museums. This is Urbis, an exhibition space on the city, opened in 2002. Even this was too arty for the brash new Manchester, and it's now being turned into a national football museum. Its architect Ian Simpson also designed the Beetham Tower, a glass skyscraper housing hotel rooms, empty flats and footballers' condos. Inside you can drink cocktails inspired by the Mancunian musical heritage, fancy a hand in glove. When Manchester is profiled or reminisced over, it's most often for a narrative which leaps from the Victorian city of Manchester liberalism, the unrestrained capitalism much beloved of Thatcherites, to the city recreated and regenerated after the IRA bomb. The poverty of 19th century Manchester and the inequalities of today are effaced. In between is a no-man's land. Yet, yeah, after the recession, the empty spaces are back, and the estates of Ancoats left in ruins by failed regeneration schemes. What new sounds might the blasted wastelands left by the property crash create?